I remember back in 2005, Steve Jobs from Apple was giving a keynote address and he was introducing a new feature to iTunes called Smart Shuffle. Next is Smart Shuffle. You know, we've gotten a lot of people that say our shuffle's not random. Well, it really is random. But sometimes random means you've got two songs from the same artist next to each other. It just happens randomly sometimes. And so what we've added is Smart Shuffle to actually make it less random, <laughs> if you want. Even though people will think it's more random, it's actually less random. And what it is, in preferences, there it is right there, it says, Smart Shuffle allows you to control how likely you are to hear multiple songs by the same artist or from the same album in a row, right? So you can leave it on random, or you can say, I want it to be more likely that I hear the songs from the same artist in a row, or less likely. You can tweak it however you want and uh, have it come out just like you'd like. Now think about what's going on here. When people are listening to music on their iPod, they hear three or four songs in a row by the same artist, and so they think the random function is broken. And in people actually wrote letters to Apple saying, hey, your random function is not random. And in response, Apple made their random function less random, so we would perceive the non-randomness as random. That's, that's right. I, I love that example. But this idea of randomness is really old. In fact, it goes back, I think, 65 years when people started looking at how people perceive um, patterns in noise. And as you said, people tend to think that chance, randomness, is a lot less lumpy than it actually is. And there's a really nice way to demonstrate this. What you can do is take a person, put them in a room, and ask them to flip a coin. So their job is to sit there, flip a coin, heads, write it down. Flip it again, tails, write it down. And keep doing this 100 times. So after those 100 coin flips, you have a sequence of heads and tails. Okay? You can then take another person and put them in the same situation. But this time, take the coin away. And so their job is to flip an, an, an imaginary coin and write down whether it's heads or tails. And so they also do this 100 times. So they just think to themselves, heads, write it down, tails, write it down, and so on. Now, if you take those two sequences, those two random sequences of 100 coin flips, and put them side by side, you can almost instantly see which one was generated by an actual coin and which one was imaginary, which one was generated by a human. Now the reason is that the one generated by a human, our own perception of how random things ought to be, is not random at all. In fact, there's way too many um, what's called alternations. So people think that uh, it should go heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, and so on. Maybe they'll throw in an odd uh, double run, heads, heads, maybe a triple if they get you know, adventurous. But it's very rare for them to throw in four, five of these in a row because it just seems like it's very non-random. Whereas if you look at the actual sequence, runs of four and five are actually way more common than what people think. Now I think the reason is, to be fair, I think the reason is that people don't have much experience with um, truly random sequences or, or things that generate random sequences. And so what they often think is that, OK, well, a coin uh, coming out heads or tails, uh, that's 50-50, whatever that means, 50-50. So it's um, two possibilities, one out of two is 50%. And so you would expect that in the, in the short run, it should come out heads just as often as it is tails. And that's kind of true, but in fact what happens is something called the law of averages, the law, law of large numbers. And that happens in the long run, but not in the short run necessarily. And so if you flip the coin a thousand times, or a hundred times even, uh, in the long run, yeah, it'll come close to about 50-50, uh, literally, or 500 and 500 if it's a thousand flips. But not in the short run. In the short run, it's really quite lumpy. You can have, um, as I said, runs of five or even six in a row uh, in the short run. And so people misinterpret what's happening in the long run for what ought to be happening in the short run. And 
yeah, it's really quite common and it happens uh, way more often than we think, not just with coin flips, but in other areas as well. Yeah, this, uh, this mis misinterpretation of random events is related to something called the gambler's fallacy. Now, if I'm flipping a coin and uh, uh, I get six heads in a row and I ask people to bet what the next uh, outcome of the next flip is going to be, people are far more likely to say, it's tails, right? Yeah, yeah, we're due for a tails because we've had six in a row, right? But think about how that could possibly work. What, what would be going on there? The coin doesn't have a memory. There's no, there's no micro trip in the coin that, that remembers the, the, the outcomes of before. And what's more, there's no, the coin has no conscience, so it can't say, oh yeah, we've had, we've had you know, six heads in a row, we, we, should, we should probably add a tails now. Each one of these flips is independent. We're starting with a clean slate every time. So getting a heads is just as likely as getting a tails. And we see this in all sorts of areas. Uh, one is with the roulette wheel at the casino. So picking uh, red or black. And the last casino I went to, they were even nice enough to put a digital display above the roulette wheel uh, showing all the previous outcomes. So if you saw that there'd been lots of blacks in a row, you could make an informed decision and, and, and bet on red. This, there's a good example of this from uh, way back in 1913 at the Monte, uh, Monte Carlo Casino where there was uh, some kerfuffle all of a sudden and then people were, were running to this particular table where 16 blacks had come up in a row and people were feverishly trying to put a, head, uh, a red bet down because we were due for one, right? What happened? 17 black. 18 black, 19 black, 20 black again. It went up to 26 blacks in a row and the casino made millions of dollars just on that, those, those few minutes, right? So it happens with lottery winners as well. They'll, they'll pick uh, numbers that have not come up for a while. Uh, people at slot machines, if it hasn't paid off for a few hours of them playing, they'll guard it, they'll, they'll shut it down so nobody else can play it. Now this, it's intuitive, it's, it's common, uh, but it's false. And this is why they call it the gambler's fallacy.